what's up guys? A new Menacee Mega Knight deck has jumped its way to the top of Clash Royale. The Clash Royale World Champion and current rank 3 player in the world is using this Mega Knight deck. By cycling archers in the back, you open up each lane as a possibility to attack. Especially since opponents will be using their fireballs and poisons on Little Prince. And after evolved archers decimate distractions, your Mega Knights, Ram Riders, and Bandits will be leaping forward for a large amount of damage. It's time to jump up the leaderboard with this new Menacee Mega Knight deck and assert dominance. Lots of love to everyone that's using Critical Assert Tag to make all the high for videos possible. Thanks to Warcraft Rumble for sponsoring the video today. Warcraft Rumble is a new, fast-paced action strategy game. It's set within the Warcraft universe where collectible minis come to life to battle it out. With over 65 different units across five different families, the Alliance, Beast, Horde, Undead, and Blackrock, you'll have a ton to choose from. And I love upgrading my units with different skills so I can completely change the way they play. There's multiple game modes with a single player campaign, head-to-head -head PvP, and dungeons, so there's something for every player. The game has a huge single player experience with over 70 different missions, as well as weekly and monthly challenges. You can join guilds and link up with friends to progress even faster. And I linked up with a ton of tribe at BlizzCon for Rumble Mania, where I got to play Warcraft Rumble competitively against Annie on the big stage. I'm so happy I won my match and I can't wait to continue to get better so I can crush people next time. Warcraft Rumble is easy to learn at the start but difficult to master, so as you keep playing, it never gets boring. Out of all the new strategy games on mobile this year, Warcraft Rumble is by far my favorite. Download today using my link in the description of the video. So Alex finished 274 in the world, and we're ready to rock him with Mega Knight. I want him to start spamming into us, so I'm going to ban it on the left-hand side, give him an opportunity to go and spam directly in the right when he's up 3 Elixir, but decides to allocate Elixir with the Zappies. Generally, when people are running Zappies right now, they're trying to bait out my Poison or Fireball so they can go for the Little Prince and get full value. But I'm not very scared right now because I have Ram Rider, and Ram Rider gets countered by Zappies. So having that out of cycle is actually a big benefit for me. Okay, we're going to go Little Prince. We're going to get ready to go and click the ability to knock back the Royal Giant. And then we're going to use the damage of the Archers to hopefully finish everything off. Notice how I put my Archers in a position where they're not going to get Fireballed next to everything else. That was pretty important. All right, let's go in for a banner on the right-hand side because we want to separate our stuff. So then, obviously, if he goes in for any elixir on the left, he also has to spend a little bit more on the bandit and the archer on the right. That's beautiful. It's nice to do split lane pressure because a lot of times opponents are going to use spells on cleanup on defense. And if they don't have that luxury, then they're going to take a lot more damage. So even if this guy is a top 300 player, he got massively melted by that one archer. <laughs> I think, because he doesn't have log in cycle, he's probably going to try to go and defend this without the fisherman because he doesn't have that in cycle because he used that on the left-hand side. So what is he going to do? Like Electro Spirit and Goblins? Oh, he's going to have Tombstone and Zappies. All right, well, that also works relatively well for him. Unfortunately, the poison doesn't clip all the Zappies, but the one that's going to the left-hand side is not something that I really have to worry about. He has Fisherman back in cycle soon, so if I go in for a Royal Ghost, it's not going to give us a great trade. It'll actually give him a King Tower activation. But at the same time, I don't think that I can go in for a Little Prince in the back left, because if I do, then guess what happens? Opponent goes in for a Fireball, he gets chip damage on my tower, and I feel relatively stupid. So instead of doing that, I'm going to go and constantly split up my archers. Not only that will give us good defense to the left-hand side, but it will also give us an opportunity to make things happen as well. I'm going to go in for a Bandit to try to make a prediction on the Fisherman. It ends up hitting the... Oh, man. That was better than a prediction on the Fisherman that was going to go and pull our Mega Knight. That actually hit the Mother Witch, too. That was beautiful. But yeah, we're trying to make plays where we can get value regardless of what happens. We're trying to make the safe play that will give us value on predictions. And also, if it doesn't work out and we don't hit the prediction, well, we don't lose the game. Always trying to make the safer plays from that perspective. I'm going to click the Little Prince ability on top of the Zappies. Maybe the Zappy still hits it. Maybe we can knock it back. Yo, Little Prince popping off at zero HP. That's what we like to see. We're splitting up our Archer so our opponent doesn't get good Fireball value. And then he's going to go in for a Fisherman. So let's poison on the Fisherman hit hopefully the poison on the tombstone too he's not dropping a tombstone unfortunately but it is what it is finishing off the mother which is pristine and then we can go in for a bandit here as well because that will be able to take his entire tower if he doesn't respect it he needs to respond to that one little archer dude that archer it's still alive no way and it's gonna lock tower too i'm telling you 300 damage per shot when it fires that fast is disastrous for our dude his tower on the right now is healthier than one on the left when his tower on the left was relatively full hp he can go and bombard him with the Ram Rider, and he doesn't have Zappies in cycle, so he's got to have to go for a Fisherman. Let's go for a Bandit to try to mess up the Fisherman. I think he's messed up to the point that he doesn't even want to try to defend that. He saw the Bandit in the middle. He's like, okay, I'm not going to go and yoink that and pull an L. So instead, he got handed the loss by the Ram Rider. And after ravaging that top 300 Royal Giant player, we've pushed up to 1,700 in the world. Yo, Darks loves no skill. Well, I've got the most no skill strategy of just spamming evolved archers everywhere. And that's how we break through with this deck. Getting the Archer's Evolution is key to the success. 
Also, he really does love no skill. Sparky, massive menace in the meta. It is the most brainless thing. You drop the Sparky in the back, you Goblin Giant, you Rage, and you almost always get value. So I applaud the innovation here. He's dropping the Goblin Giant just like I said he would. We're going to go for our Little Prince. We are going to be able to kill the Shrek, and then I can probably go and get away with a Barb Bro afterward to clean up the Spear Goblins, get on top of the Sparky, and then blast it away, hopefully, with the Guardian. Oh, don't hit my Little Prince! Yes! That was incredible. That was so cool. <laughs> Most of the time, the Sparky gets a shot there, but it didn't work out for our opponent, and that gets me hyped up. All right, so one of the best feelings in Clash Royale is beating Sparky because I play against it almost half of my games. I'm going to go for Archers here, and then I wanted to get a Mega Knight down. I don't know if I can afford it. I think I'm poor. No, 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 don't do that. How about you don't go for Archers arrows? Don't do that, man. That was rude and uncalled for. You civil, uncivilized scoundrel. <laughs> I'm going to go for Bandit right, and the Mega Knight's going to jump on his tower. He doesn't have Elixir. Like, what is he doing? Oh, yeah, you got a little Prince, so you're fine. You just spend three Elixir, and then it rapid fire machine guns and deletes my Mega Knight. Most situations in almost every meta in Clash Royale, if someone did a play that bad, they would immediately lose the game. But not in this meta. You are saved if you have Little Prince. <laughs> we're going to go for the ability here, and then I think we're better off just going for a Ghost and cleaning the rest of it off. Oh, I thought that that thing was going to survive, but he messed it up. That's beautiful. All right, let's show him how to hit the ability. So as you guys can see, the Dark Prince is going to lock onto the Guardian. Our Little Prince doesn't cross the river. And now, this guy just gets to show how to play the game with some skill. Even though we're running a no-skill deck and he's running a no-skill deck, he doesn't even have the skill to go and drop the ability correctly. So there's there's a problem there. And yes, we do flame Goblin Giant Sparky players because, you know, it is one of those decks. It is the one deck that I hate more than anything in Clash. If you guys had to ask me, you let me know down in the comment section. Is there one deck in Clash that you just hate playing against? For me, it is the only thing that I lose to when I'm running beatdown decks. And the only thing I can't outplay in some specific matchups is Goblin Giant Sparky. So he's going to go in for some spam on the other side. That's totally fine for me. We can go Bar Barrel here. One of the best things you can do is go in for a Mega Knight directly on the Sparky and then just laugh at them because then the Sparky doesn't cross the river and you're like, oh, we're chilling. We can go for our Archers here as well. I need to play a little bit better and think a little bit more on what we're doing. I'm going to get the Bandit to dash and then we can go in for a Bar Barrel. And wait, we have a 2-0 victory. Why am I stressing it at all? Even if he takes a tower, he's dead. GG, my dude! I'm so glad to win that one. A decisive 2-0 victory in the face of Sparky. Also, he's sparking in the back. I don't know what he's thinking. Is he going to use the electricity from the Sparky to teleport to our tower and try to splash it down? I don't know what his big plan was, but I'm glad we were able to power down the Sparky player. And we've pushed up to 1,200 in the world. Yo, this guy finished number six in the world. He is way better than me. Okay, we have a true challenge right now. I'm going to fully focus in this match. So, not often do I get to play against someone that's finished top 10 in Clash Royale, and here we are. Whew. All right. I'm going to go in for the Bandit on the right-hand side. I'm going to try to get a Mega Knight on top of the Little Prince on the left. How can I make this happen? What is the strategy here? I bet you he's either going to have Balloon or he's going to have a Hog Rider deck with Freeze. It's going to be one of those. So, so, it's going to be a Hog Rider. Let's go in for the Mega Knight. Bounce back the Hog Rider. Minimize the amount of damage he gets with the Hog. Only one hit on our tower. And the Mega Knight still jumps on the Little Prince. Perfectly positioned, if I do say so myself. And he's going to try to activate King Tower, so let's try to stop that with our Ram Rider. It'll be harder for him to activate King Tower with this cannon if we have the Ram Rider charging at him as well. Yeah, he's not going to let the Mega Knight jump on the cannon and then have the King Tower activation. Ram Rider is also going to dash on the tower, right? Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't get the full charge. So th when it dashes or charges, whatever unit it is, it deals double damage. So that would have been nice for us. We can always poison on top of the Little Prince, but I don't want to do that too soon. It might be better for me to just go and split Archers and then finish off his Little Prince with a other defense because then he could hog rider if i go for poison it just doesn't feel very satisfying for us to do that let's go in for the ghost let's go in for everything that we have pretty much to finish that off guaranteed knowing that our opponent has fireball means that it's going to be hard for me to stack up evolved archers in the same side but the archer in the left is going to give us a little bit of an advantage Whew, all right so we are beating a top six player in clash let's see if we can actually pull away with a victory here I'm going to go Little Prince in the back because it's just so cheap to cycle and it's overpowered. Kind of want to cycle overpowered cards. That's generally what I've learned in Clash. We're going to go in for a Ram Rider if he decides to go for a Hog Rider. We have massive map control at the moment. It's going to be hard for him to defend this adequately, so we'll see what we can do. I can go for Mega Knight on the right. Little Prince stopped inches away. 
We can poison on his little prince as well. I might be able to kill that with my evolved archer. Yeah, I think his little prince does die. My evolved archer stays alive. He might activate King Tower with that Mega Knight. Oh, of course he is. He's good enough to do that. That doesn't feel good for us. Yeah, I, I should have Ram Rider. I should have, like, not allowed him to isolate everything. But I think it was going to happen regardless. At this skill level, it was going to happen regardless for sure. We're going to get our archers down with the Ram Rider. And I don't think that the skeletons lock onto my tower. So I should be good. But the Ram Rider is also not going to give us any value either. So it's difficult to make this happen. But I do think we can go for Mega Knight in the back and build up a huge push. We are still losing the game by a little bit. But we'll see what we can do. I'm going to go in for the ability of the Little Prince to knock back the Hog Rider. And then if he fireballs, we're still good. Little Prince doesn't die. He's going to have to drop more than that. And we can go in for a Royal Ghost in the middle. Or we can start to go in for a Ram Rider. I think Ram Rider is slightly better. If he goes in for a log, the Ram Rider will jump the log. And then we can go in for a Poison on Skeletons that he might have to drop on top of the Cannon too. Please, Guardian, break through. Okay, let's go. We're forcing a Fireball. Guardian's on the tower. Let's freaking go. We might be able to beat one of the best players in Clash Royale right now. I'm feeling really confident about our start. Uh, but the end is where he starts to play really well. And he's not going to give me as many opportunities anymore, I feel. We do have the Little Prince. If you guys know how I was able to accomplish that, I knew that the cannon wouldn't pull. And I knew that the Ram Rider would jump over the log. So knowing those type of interactions, that's how you beat someone better than you in Clash. And it's not necessarily easy to do. We're going to go and cycle our ability. And then we're going to go in for Archers. And then the Skeletons are going to be a nuisance. But the Ram Rider... I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think I have to poison this. I don't think that the, if I poison, I, I die. That was really close, though. Oh, my gosh. That was insane. We got to go Ram Rider. And he might be able to stop those with a Fireball. But the Archer does hit the tower. We can go for a Bandit as well. Ram Rider is not going to charge through. Dang it. I needed that. He's going to be able to go Skeletons. He's too good. He's not going to let me get it. Uh, am I able to stop a Hog Rider right now? I don't know. If I go in for a Little Prince ability, that could be good. I don't want to go in for archers here so I can get back to the evolution, but I don't even know if I'm able to. I'm going to go in for a Mega Knight preemptively on the hog, and I'm going to get a little Prince down with the archer. I don't think that gets a shot. That's beautiful. Okay. We can go in for the Ram Rider on top of the little Prince to damage it down and also the cannon. We can start to poison twice. I think that's the strategy for us. We just want to poison twice and then we win. I can go little Prince ability as well. The Mega Knight's not going to jump. The little Prince might be able to allow us to win. Please let me beat someone so good at the game. Come on, Clash. All right, we're in a poison here as well, and that should do enough. I think we beat him. Let's freaking go. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Sure, he had a level 13 little prince, and we might have had a good matchup there because Mega Knight counters his deck. But wow, that is an exhilarating game. Putting this at top 1,000 in the world right now. Well, 1,001. You guys are going to troll me about that. But man, that was an exhilarating, awesome match. And as you guys can see, Marquinhos is insanely good. Finishing number seven in the world at over 3,300 medals. Beating someone that good shows how broken this Mega Knight deck can be. Let's continue to jump up the ranks, beating players better than us. It's time to cycle our archers against AJ. He's going to go for his Phoenix in the back first play. So generally when we see Phoenix in this meta, it means Electro Giant or it's going to be a Royal Giant deck. It's going to be one of the Giant Brothers is what I'm trying to say. So let's bandit in left-hand side. We're going to force out a Goblin Giant. Well, that was the third Giant that I didn't name. It's okay. It's fine, Shrek. We see you. We're going to push you back, though, so we don't see you for very long. And then maybe we can go for a Ram Rider. I think I'd go right into a Sparky. So let's try to apply opposite lane pressure with the Ram Rider there and still have the Little Prince plus the Guardian force out Elixir in the right. If that can lock onto the Mother Witch, that would have been stellar, but it didn't work out as planned. Oh, my gosh. Little Prince popping off, though. We can go for archers in the middle, finish off the mini P.E.K.K.A., and then have the archers stay alive. Royal Ghost is going to go invisible, and then we make the Mother Witch go invisible. It's beautiful. All right, so how are we going to play this? If we can lock onto the Sparky with a Poison or a Mega Knight, that will do enough damage for our Little Prince ability to be able to finish it off with the Barbaro every time. There's a lot of ways of outmaneuvering Sparky with this deck, but if you try to go head first into a Sparky with a Mega Knight, you're never necessarily going to win. So... You have to keep their elixir low at all points in time and apply pressure. So I'm going to go in for a little prince. Try to go for a poison if he goes in for a sparky. And we're not going to go head first into it. Oh, huh. Interesting. I haven't seen Monk in a minute. I really haven't seen that card in a while. <laughs> we'll see if he sparkies or if he goes mini P.E.K.K.A. I want to be able to blast back the Monk, though. If you guys didn't know, the Monk doesn't do incredibly well into the little prince. Yeah, it's able to kill it, but it can't finish off the ability as easily as you would want it to. So we're going to go for a Royal Ghost eat one mini P.E.K.K.A. shot. It's not the end of the world. We just can't eat two. And then we can start to go and split up our Evolved Archers. The way that I play this deck, splitting up the Evolved Archers every chance I can, unless we think he's going to go for a gigantic push, which he might do. 
Let's Barbaro instead and just see if he decides to. Yeah, he is going to. So we go Archers to the left, and then we're going to Poison on top of the Sparky as primary, as uh, what we want to kill. And then the Mother Witch should just die anyway, so I don't have to worry about it. Let's go in for a Ram Rider. We're going to expect him to go Mini Pekka, so we're going to go Bandit as well. And then I think we're okay if we go for a Barbaro afterward. I just can't drop it too soon. I have to drop it way after. Now we can go in for our Archers, and then we should be able to pull back the Mini Pekka. And then, oh, this is really not going as well as I thought it would. Wait, this is looking really weird. I could lose this game. Unless the bandit's able to dash on the mini pack and prioritize killing that. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was like, if that didn't work, I might have gotten all in and destroyed. Man, Sparky players built different. They don't know how to defend cards. It's a spam. All right, we're go Royal Ghost. And then I think we go for the three crown here because he doesn't seem like he has a good answer to this. I bet you we can go archers, kill the mini pack, and then have a really good interaction with the Ram Rider. So all we need to do is kill the Mini Pekka, and then we win the game. That's all I need to do. We're going to go Barbarrel here. We're going to go in for as much spam as possible. Go for our poison. And that should be able to outdamage the Sparky, guaranteed. Whew. Thankfully for us, the Mega Knight went back, soaked up some Sparky shots, and we blasted away with the win. I got to say, AJ, I hate your style of Sparky All-In because that is one of the most skillless plays in existence. Especially when Mega Knight straight up struggles to kill Goblin Giants, this matchup is not desirable. But it's kind of cool that we got all that we desired with the three crown in the end putting us up some ranks to 758 in Clash Royale. Oh, 759. I can't read correctly. This guy finished 562 in the world, and he is a part of Nation Clash. Well, our nation of archers don't want to fight against your minor. That doesn't feel good for me. So I guess the archers are really peaceful as they're getting ripped to pieces by the log. Feels bad, man. But, oh my gosh, we were somehow, some way able to manifest a way to delete the little prince. Also, Royal Ghost, can you just target the other wall breaker so I don't have to spend more elixir? <laughs> I felt so wrong. Oh, okay, wait. I don't think he has much elixir, so I'm going to click the Little Prince ability. Not because I think that we're going to get that much value out of the Little Prince, but because I want the Guardian to lock on the tower when our opponent doesn't have skeletons in the cycle. Because he uses skeletons to the left, so he doesn't have any distractions. So it's like, hey, you're probably going to get finessed if you don't have the best card cycle. It's nice to be able to have that spontaneous pressure just at the tip of your fingers. Just drop the ability, and then you tip the odds in your favor to get 300, 500 damage sometimes. Got a ton there. I'm going to Ram Rider right now, and he's probably going to drop a building. I'm going to feel like an idiot. It's not smart to drop the Ram Rider into a negative Elixir trade, but we did it anyway. I was, I was just feeling it, because maybe the Archer can lock him in the tower. And it does. No! You're so good! Don't do this to me! Don't do this to me! Don't do this to me! Royal Ghost somehow killed all the wall breakers. That never happens! My Royal Ghost always misses when my opponent goes in for a Miner. That must have been the most magical combination of cards that I've ever dropped in Clash. I think the Bandit stopped the Miner, and then everything was stuck in traffic, and then the Wall Breakers weren't able to reach my tower. That's the only reasonable conclusion that I can derive from what happened there. That's awesome. Okay, I bet you we can force him to go Bomb Tower, and we can snipe it with the Archers. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Snipe with the Archers! Please! This could work! This is actually working so much better than I thought it would. We click the little prince ability too? Please? Nice! Mega Knight's got a friend! <laughs> That's so cool. We got an insane amount of value from that. I didn't need to go for a rail ghost. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, we can poison? Did that hit the bats? I don't think it did. Wait, this is bad. How bad is this going to be for me? I mean, we have a little prince and we've got the machine gun. I think we're fine. Maybe not though. Wait, this is so scuffed. What's happening right now? Oh, okay. He's got 19 HP on the left-hand side. I was looking at the bats, and I wasn't familiar with how much they were healing because, you know, they got buffed recently, so they're just an entirely new card. And when you see them, and you're like, oh, they're not dying? It's scary because you don't know how much they're going to heal, and you're not used to it, and you're like, uh, can this not happen anymore? All right. I got to save my poison to finish off the tower on the left-hand side, so I'm not going to do anything foolish. I'm going to go for a Barbrill. I'm going to drop my Little Prince. And I'm going to drop my entire army on the left-hand side to stop this man's nation with the Wall Breakers. Eventually, we're going to use the Toxic Poison to close out the game. I'm glad we were able to win that one. Top 500 player got destroyed by Mr. Mega Knight. My Mega Knight's jumping all over the map, conquering everything. And that one push that we constructed with Mega Knight, the Little Prince, and the Evolved Archers was impossible for him to stop. When the Evolved Archers are at maximum range, dealing double the damage, with the Machine Gun Little Prince ramping up its attack speed, everything gets evaporated. And after our win streak, we've secured our spot at 650 in the world. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day.